have digital cameras, you can actually do a lot of the analysis back at home. So what we're looking for in these guys is we're trying to place them into basically three categories of why they died. So we want to look for uh, prop wounds going across, like this right here. Is, it's kind of an unusual wound. Um, it doesn't really look like a prop wound because it's kind of jagged. This might be an old shark bite right here. Don't know what this one would be. But with the prop wounds, you know, in addition to the typical slash, 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 sometimes you get like nicks at the, at the side, and if it penetrates the slow cavity, it can definitely cause infections, and and, uh, and the animal can die subsequently. So if it's a prop wound, what we'll do is we'll actually do a necropsy, animal autopsy. <coughs> we'll look at the heart to see if, um, if there's blood left in the heart. If you, so it gets hit by a boat. We kind of assume that it might bleed out at some point, so you wouldn't expect to see uh, blood. If, there, if it died, kind of post, it might have coagulated blood, meaning it kind of survived. Or, um, you know, if it got hit like as a post mortem, it was dead, floating, got hit by a boat. You expect some coagulated blood in there. As opposed to the boat killed it, it bled out, there's no blood in the, in the heart. So we want to make sure uh, it's not a boat strike. Um, this wound right here looks like a, on a natural suture line. Then we want to see, well, what else is it? General state of health. For health, we're kind of looking at an animal like this. Is is there like an abnormal amount of barnacles on the head, flippers, carapace? Obviously, this animal is highly decomposed. Uh, but what we can see doesn't suggest that there's a whole lot of uh, barnacles. Even this this kind of coloring right here suggests that it's an animal that probably is hiding under reefs or wrecks, and it's kind of wearing this stuff off as it goes underneath these little ledges. So uh, then we say, well, if there's not a sick animal, it doesn't have prop wounds. I mean, this is uh, definitely a wound that looks like it's been healing for some time. There's a nick right there. Um, may have caused the animal long-term uh, a decline in the animal, but if everything looks good on the animal, then uh, we uh, kind of, the next culprit is usually a, a trawler mortality. But the animal generally is healthy. And this is a, a large uh, reproductive animal. So, for this one, since this is a, uh, a reproductive size, um, we want to collect humerus bone for aging. What they'll do is they'll section the bone just like you would section a tree. Uh, it's not a perfect system because there is some reabsorption of the inner layers, calcium layers. So what I'll do is try to grab this humerus bone. Put it back so they can take, put it in that aging lab. Get a sense of how old this female was. It doesn't appear to have any tags or tag scars on it, so it's it's hard to say with an animal that's decomposed. So there's the there's the bone I'm looking for. They'll cut it and put it under a microscope and look for the marine layers. of the bone around the eyeball. Obviously this animal has no eyeball. Very decomposed. There's no, uh, no chance to do any kind of not necropsy or animal autopsy on this animal. So if it's a fresh animal, I could cut it open. Look at its internal organs. Get a sense of health. I could sex it. This bone right here is useful in ID animals. It's unique, uh, it's different for every type of sea turtle. So every species will have a different type of entoplastron bone right there. This is uh, called an entoplastron bone. It's like, it's just a breastbone. And if all I have is a skeleton, this 
interplatform bone is kind of unique to every different species. So the loggerhead will kind of look like a broad dagger. You know, like a camp, this won't so be so broad here. It'll be like a come down to a nice point, like an old uh, Arabic dagger. Uh, the green sea turtles are much more smooth, and uh, you know, as well as the uh, the haunch bills. So that's a very useful tool in identifying species. But this is a pretty obvious. This is a log head. It's the most common sea turtle we have around here. It's the type they're nesting on our beaches. This animal uh, may have nested, or would may have nested this year if she hadn't been uh, killed. As I said, there's no real you know, silver bullet as to what killed this animal, but uh, at least the parts we can look at look fairly normal, except for the one cut on the, the wound margin here. We don't really we know it's a logger as heat turtle. We know it's of reproductive size. Don't know if it's reproductively active this year, uh, but we know it doesn't have any uh, boat strikes on it. It doesn't look unhealthy, but just look at the carapace. Um, so in a healthy animal of that size, you, know, you always have to worry about uh, commercial fishery interactions, although with the level of decomposition of this animal, you really can't say for certain that's what killed the animal. That's just kind of where it points to at this point. So <laughs> this is a very unfortunate, this is a size class we don't want to lose. It's the most important size we have. This is what we're trying to protect. So every time you lose an adult female like this, you lose all the nests it's going to produce this year you know, from this point out. And so, so we only have a limited number of females that's on the beach. This is a significant blow to the population and our recovery efforts. These are what we're gearing up to protect with all the laws and regulations. So it's an unfortunate thing, um, but at least she, we got some good information from her, what we could, um, and we got the, the humerus bone, so we can get a good estimate of, um, of what her age would be. So this will go to an aging lab, and so they'll be able to use it and get an approximate age of, the, of this animal. Uh, won't be able to tell if it's male or female. I assume this is probably a, a female, but you can't tell the, the reproductive organs are completely missing from the animals. So. Anyway, that's very unfortunate. Biologists with the Department of Natural Resources urge the public to assist in conserving loggerheads and other sea turtles. When visiting the coast, please remember the following tips. Never disturb a sea turtle that is crawling to or from the sea. Once a sea turtle has begun nesting, observe her only from a distance. Do not crowd. Do not shine lights in a sea turtle's eyes or take flash photography. Avoid or reduce artificial beach lighting at night. Keep pets on a leash to reduce the potential for nest disturbance by dogs. Please report all sightings to 800 to save me. To report a dead or injured turtle or sea turtle harassment, call 800 to save me, 1 800 272 8363. For more information on anything you have seen here, please contact the Public Affairs Office at 770 918 6400 or visit our website at www.georgiawildlife.com.